Welcome to this act of devotion this Holy Week, the Stations of the Cross, where we journey with Christ on the road to his crucifixion. We walk with him and we mark certain points in the journey where we will have times of prayer and meditation. We worship you, Christ, and we bless you. Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it is for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. We stand before the cross, the cross on which our Lord hung to redeem humankind. As we meditate on the way of his passion, let us remember that it was for us that he was crucified. May it help us to be truly sorry for the times when we have failed him and strengthen us to take up our cross and follow him in our lives. Lord Jesus, you came from the Father to redeem us. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you showed your love for us on the cross. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, give us your strength to take up our cross and follow you. Lord, have mercy. We arrive at our first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the power of men. They will put him to death, and on the third day he will be raised up again. Pilate could find no fault in Jesus, but he handed him over to the people. A weak ruler, swayed by a violent crowd. It made little difference to Pilate whether one Jew lived or died and it enabled him to obtain from the crowd the useful affirmation that they had no king but Caesar. So Pilate handed him over to them. We may not like to think that we would not be part of this crowd, and yet in each one of us is the voice which cries, Crucify him! For every time we fail Jesus, we join our voice to those of the angry crowd. Lord Jesus, we have sinned against you and crucified you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have mercy on us and forgive us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you help us to be the people you have called us to be. Lord, have mercy. The second station, Jesus receives his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He had no form or charm to attract us, no beauty to win our hearts. He was despised, the lowest of men, a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering. Yet ours were the sufferings he was bearing, ours the sorrows he was carrying. The procession to the execution began. And Jesus, though weak from continuous questioning, mocking and beating, was made to carry his own cross. He was led away as a common criminal to suffer one of the most degrading forms of execution ever invented. But the burden that Jesus had to carry 
was much greater than the physical weight of the cross. For he also had to carry the sins of us all. Let us offer our sorrow for the times when we have added to this burden. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the times when we have failed you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the times we have rejected you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us not to fail you anymore. Lord, have mercy. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. In his anguish he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Weakened by the unbearable torments that he had already gone through, the added weight of the cross was too much for Jesus and he fell. As he lay there, the cry of anguish that he was later to utter cannot have been far from his lips. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We sometimes feel alone, that God has forsaken us and does not answer our prayers. But we, like Jesus, must know in our hearts that however far away God seems to be, he never forsakes us and is always faithful. Lord Jesus, even you once felt forsaken by your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are always faithful and loving. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to know that you are always with us. Lord, have mercy. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Simeon said to Mary, Look, he is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce your soul too. Mary had brought up her son through many hardships and cared for him as a loving mother. Now she saw him being led to his death at little over 30 years of age. Was this really what he had meant when he said, did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? Certainly this was the sword that Simeon had predicted would pierce her soul. But Mary, unlike most of the disciples, did not desert her son in his time of need but stood by him to the end. Let us ask that we too may have a faith like Mary to stand by Jesus whatever the cost. Lord Jesus, we often lack faith in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we often fail to trust in you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to love you as Mary did. Lord, have mercy. The fifth station, the cross of Christ is carried by Simon. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. A man had two sons. 
He went and said to the first, my boy, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not go, but afterwards thought better of it and went. The man then went and said the same thing to the second, who answered, certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of these two did the father's will? Jesus was so weak that the soldiers were afraid that he may not reach the place of execution. So they forced a passerby to carry his cross. Simon no doubt tried to refuse, but in the end he did carry the cross. On the day, only the day before the disciples had insisted that they would remain faithful to Jesus, whatever happened. But first they fell asleep in the garden and then after the arrest they ran away. How like the parable that Jesus had told, where it was the unwilling son who in fact did what his father wanted. Words and empty promises are not enough. We, like Simon, must take up our cross and share in Christ's passion in our daily lives. Lord Jesus, you carried your cross for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we are weak and often fail you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to take up our cross and follow you. Lord, have mercy. The sixth station, the face of Jesus is wiped by, by Veronica. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. In truth, I tell you, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. In a great act of kindness, a woman stepped forward from the crowd and wiped the blood-stained face of Jesus. A few days earlier, another woman had anointed Jesus with costly perfume. A few hours later, a man would give Jesus his tomb. All of these acts of love and charity to the Lord, and we can perform similar acts of charity to Jesus, living now in our brothers and sisters in need. For whatever we do to help one another, we do it for Jesus. Lord Jesus, you care for all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you ask us to love one another as you have loved us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to see you living in others. Lord, have mercy. The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Save me, God, for the waters have closed in on my very being. I am sinking in the deepest swamp, and there is no firm ground. I am exhausted with calling out. My throat is hoarse. My eyes are worn out with searching for my God. A little further along the road, Jesus stumbled and fell again. He must have felt so utterly exhausted and desolate that he could not possibly go any further. But he had to go on to fulfil his father's will. And so again, he struggled to his feet and carried on. Sometimes we too feel that things are hopeless. But we cannot go on. But we too have God's work to do and we too must continue with trust and faith in the power of Jesus working in us. Lord Jesus you perfectly fulfilled the will of your Father. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus you call us to live our lives in your service. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us not to give up. Lord, have mercy. The eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that kill the prophets and stone those who were sent to you. How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you refused. Look, your house will be deserted. Some pious women began to weep for Jesus and tried to console him. But he told them not to weep for him, but for themselves and for their children. Jesus was in agony, and yet he refused their consolation, not through ingratitude, because he knew the agony that they and others would suffer because of their rejection of him. When we feel rejected or badly treated, we must remember this example of Jesus. We must still remember others who are suffering, perhaps more than we are, and who need our help and compassion, and not let ourselves become caught up in self-pity. Lord Jesus, you came to serve, not to be served. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your compassion, you came to us in our need. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to show love and compassion to others. Lord, have mercy. The ninth station. Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Simon, Simon, look, Satan has got his wish to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And once you have recovered, you in your turn must strengthen your brothers. Three times Jesus resisted the temptations of Satan. Three times Peter denied Jesus. Three times... Jesus fell on the way to Calvary. Just as Jesus forgave Peter, even that threefold denial, so he will forgive us if we turn to him in penitence. No sin is too great for Jesus to forgive, so long as we are truly sorry and are prepared to rely on his love and forgiveness rather than on our own efforts. Even after this third and heaviest fall, Jesus once again struggled to his feet and continued. And so must we. Even in the moment of our greatest fall, we must not lose hope, but get up and continue with faith in our Lord's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you love us whatever we do. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us whenever we fail you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to rely on you. Lord, have mercy. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his clothing. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. 
But as long as we have food and clothing, we shall be content with that. The journey was over. They had arrived at last at the place of execution. First they stripped Jesus of his clothing, and so he ended his life as he had begun it, with nothing. We have clothing and enough food, and many other comforts, which we rightly enjoy, but we must not become so involved with the things of this world that we lose sight of what really matters. We must keep our sight firmly fixed on God and to be ready to accept whatever comes to us in his name, even to being left with nothing. Lord Jesus, you have given us everything we have. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave your whole life for us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to give our lives in your service. Lord, have mercy. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, not seven, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. Jesus stretched out his arms on the cross in a gesture of forgiveness for the whole world. Before he died, he had time for two further particular acts of forgiveness. First, he forgave his executioners, even as they hammered in the nails. And then he forgave the penitent thief who was crucified with him. Just as Jesus forgave them, so he always forgives us when we sin. And so also must we forgive others who wrong us. Lord Jesus, you came to bring reconciliation to humankind. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have always ready to forgive us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to forgive others as you forgive us. Lord, have mercy. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We are preaching a crucified Christ, to the Jews an obstacle they cannot get over, to the Gentiles foolishness, but to those who have been called a Christ who is both the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus hung on the cross for only a short time. The mental and physical torments he had suffered had taken all his strength. He commended his spirit to his father and died. It was all over. But of course it was not all over. It was only the beginning. Christ had to die so that we could live. As the soldier pierced his side, out flowed the blood and the water that was to seal the new and everlasting covenant between God and the world. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the blood of the everlasting covenant. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, nourish us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> The 
the thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Unless a wheat grain falls into the earth and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Jesus hung dead on the cross, and so now did the two thieves. The crowds had gone home, the soldiers had left, silence descended upon Calvary. The body of Jesus was taken down from the cross and laid in Mary's arms. Now she carried her son's lifeless body in her arms, as once she had carried his unborn body in her womb. For this death was the prelude to new life. Lord Jesus, your death brought life to the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our life and our hope. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, raise us up to new life in you. Lord, have mercy. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. When we were baptised into Christ Jesus, we were baptised into his death. So by our baptism into his death, we were buried with him. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glorious power, we too should begin living a new life. The body of Christ Jesus was placed in the tomb, but not even the power of death could hold him. Christ had to die and be buried before he could rise again. In the same way, we too have to die and be buried with Christ in the waters of baptism, so that we too can rise again to new life with him. Let us then try to live that risen life here on earth, so that when our time comes to die, we may pass through the gates of death to new and everlasting life with Jesus. Lord Jesus, you give us new birth in the waters of baptism. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you wash us clean in your blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, lead us through death to eternal life with you. Lord, have mercy. We know that Christ has been raised from the dead and will never die again. Death has no power for him any more. For by dying, he is dead to sin once and for all. And now the life that he lives is life with God. In the same way, we must see ourselves as being dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. We have meditated on Christ's journey from condemnation in Pilate's palace to death on the cross and burial in a stranger's tomb. We have considered what it means to us. We have expressed sorrow for our sins and we have promised to live closer to Christ in future. Now we must join those first disciples in their watch on the first Holy Saturday as they waited to see what the future would hold for them. They waited in desolation and fear, but we wait in expectation and hope, confident in the resurrection that we know has happened. As we come to this, the end of our meditation, I wish all of you a peaceful and meditative journey through Holy Week and to the glory of Easter. Amen. <laughs>